Okay, so in this video, we're going to cover for loops in Python. So to start off, if you want to follow along with me, just uh, create a new file, and we're going to call that. Let's go with lesson six .py. And yes, I want to change the name, and I'm going to drag that into my Notepad plus plus, and we'll get started. So loops are super useful and they can be challenging at first, but I promise if you think about them in the right way, uh, you should be able to understand them no problem. Now the key to understanding for loops is having a firm grasp of the basic parts. The first part is of course the for. Uh, the for keyword exists in just about every programming language that I know, and it simply means for this many times. So we put the for there and then we're going to tell it how many times. Now we need a variable and I usually just use i because since this is an iteration sort of principle I use i for iterator. So your i is a variable that holds your iteration value and controls that and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So we're going to say i and with Python uh, instead of anything more complicated like you'd see in other languages you just give it a range of values that i is going to carry. So for i in range, and then you put the uh, the from and to value. So you want i to be in a range from one number to uh, another number. So from a start number to a stop number, and it's going to iterate at certain uh, increments through those numbers. So let's just pick something random. I will say between one and five. So i is going to um, iterate between 1 and 5 and as long as I leave the rest of this blank and I just put two uh, parameters into this range function uh, then it will iterate up so by plus 1 automatically so then I put my colon here and those are the basic parts so for this many times which is as long as I is between 1 and 5 then the loop is going to run that many times. So the, basically you're telling it that the loop is going to run uh, four times. The reason why it's four is because you're starting at one and you're ending at five, but the top of these ranges is exclusive, which means it's not going to include the five. So it's going to run four times. And I'm going to print something here. Let's just say I. So, is, so while I is between these uh, two numbers or four, uh, as many times as it takes for I to get from 1 to 4, we're going to print I. And so if I run that, you can see it goes 1, 2, 3, 4. So what happens is I starts out at 1, because that's what we put in our range. So we print I. So the 1 gets printed out. Then it iterates up by 1 every time the loop runs. So the loop circles around again. Now I is equal to 2. It's going to print 2. Uh, we are circling around again, and now i is equal to 3. Now what's happening here is every time the loop runs, Python's checking it to make sure we didn't reach 5 yet. And every time the loop comes around again and we have not reached this 5, it's going to print the i again. So now the i is equal to 3, and that's still less than 5, so we're going to print i again. So the 3 gets printed. And one last time, i gets equal to 4, that's still less than 5. We're going to print i, which is 4, so we print the 4 out. Now, uh, the loop circles around again. We're adding another one to i, but this time it is equal to 5, so the loop exits, and that's why we don't get another print. So hopefully that's pretty basic so far. Now I'm going to bake your noodle a little bit, because we can add another uh, numerical sort of parameter into this equation. And this is a, a third variable that handles both uh, the direction of the iteration and the size of the iteration. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and start uh, i at 2 this time. And we want to go all the way up to 10. But we don't want to count by 1s anymore. We want to count by 2s. We can go by plus 2. Now if I leave a plus 2 here, it goes from 2 to 10 by 2s. So if I run this, you can see it goes 2, 4, 6, 8, and obviously it doesn't get to 10 because the top of the range is, again, exclusive. And here's where it gets really tricky. I can actually put a negative sign here, 
and I can reverse this iteration so that if I uh, switch the 10 and the 2, this will now print in descending order. So if I run this, 10, 8, 6, 4. And basically what it's doing is it's starting I at 10 and subtracting 2 from I every time the loop runs until we get to 2. As soon as that's equal to 2, remember the top of the range is exclusive, so we never actually print the 2 because as soon as we get to the 2, the loop exits. So we're left with 10, 8, 6, 4. So beyond the basics, let's get into some more practical use stuff. Uh, let's say I wanted to print all my numbers in a row. I want to avoid this thing where I just get them vertically like this, and I kind of want to print them all in a row. Well, if I tried to do that, I would have to create a variable called output, and I'll set it equal to an empty string. And every time this loop runs, instead of printing, I can't print that all in one uh, statement because, or I have to print it all in one statement. I can't print it each time the loop runs because each time the loop runs, uh, or each time print runs, it skips a line and there's nothing I can do about that. So I'm left with creating this output variable and I'm going to print output at the end. And I'm going to add the output with the loop and uh, I'm going to add my numbers one by one to output and then I just print output at the end. So if you thought about it, it would probably stand to reason that you could say output is equal to output uh, plus uh, I and then you could add like some formatting stuff like an extra space in between each of the numbers and you'd actually have to use uh, commas for these and you think that that would work out however you run into some uh, formatting issues that are unpreventable with this type of thing so even though uh, this stands to reason that it would be like this doesn't actually work out that way so what you want to do is instead of doing this you want to cast i into a string and just add it on to output so instead of um, what we had before and using the comma we actually have to explicitly cast our numerical i value into a string. And the way we do that is by using the str function and putting i in as a parameter. So that turns i into a string, and then we're just adding it onto output each time the loop runs. And by the time we get here to the print statement, output should be all full of all the numbers we want, and it should print out in a nice little row. So you can see here that... Uh, it did do that however it's probably a little bit more readable if we put a space in also so if i run that again 10 8 6 4 everything all in a nice little row and it looks even better if we go by ones and you can see i never get down to one because top of the range is exclusive However, if I did ever want to get uh, to the bottom or the top of the range, I could change this one to zero. Or if you're going up, let's uh, get rid of this and try between 10 and 1. Instead of 10 here, I just go 1 higher to 11. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I can do 10. So let's give you a practical use application for something like these loops. Let's say I wanted to make a batch of cookies and I have an oven uh, that only makes 25 cookies at a time. So I will say I need, I need, uh, and I'll set an input for these. Um, please enter the number of cookies you need so I'll end up doing that and then my batch size is 25 because my oven will only make 25 cookies at a time so then I could say 4 and I'll call my variable cookies this time instead of I so four cookies in range, and my range is need, 
the number of cookies that I need and I'm going from the number of cookies that I need and hopefully going down to zero but remember that the top of that range is exclusive so I need a negative one here if I want to have uh, the idea is to go from the number of cookies that I put in which is the number of cookies that I need and going down to zero so then I um, I'm going to iterate down uh, by the batch size which is 25 each time the loop runs so then uh, each time loop runs I'm gonna say cookies needed and I should be the number then I can print uh, my batch number so I'll say batch let's go number so the number of batch that I'm on and I will just put uh, let's say batch so if I'm going to use that batch I have to declare it up here and I'll just set it equal to one to start off with so I have batch here and it prints my batch number and then each time the loop runs I'm also going to do another trick here I'm going to add one to batch so because each time I make one I on a different I'm on the next batch so and then I'm at the end when I'm all done and all my badges are made I'm gonna let's just say order up like Spongebob so now if I print this I can enter the number of cookies that I need and since I'm doing 25 batch size let's just do 25 or let's just do 75 so I know I'm getting a nice even number so I start off with cookies needed all right and that's 75 and I'm on batch number one so that's where I'm starting off with I'm uh, starting off with the 75 that I put in and the the first batch uh, by the time I get to the second one, I've gone down by the batch size, which is 25. So I'm down to 50, and I'm on the second batch. Same thing, down another 25 to 20, I'm on batch 3. Uh, I need zero cookies by the time batch number 4 is done, because it goes down another 20, 25. So now I need zero cookies, and my order's up, and it prints. So that is your basic for loop setup. And on the next video, I'm going to show you how to use these loops with some string methods that are really fun.